talk a little bit about Starcade. We're going to talk about it. I mean, we already mentioned it. Me and Jake did a whole thing on uh, on Patreon about it. But we really haven't talked a lot about it in the public and why it was why it's such a ridiculous thing that that this damn thing didn't just take place on the network or on YouTube or that somebody didn't get footage of it to do commentary. You got some crap bum wedding photographers to take videos of the thing just so you could have three camera shots or so just to put commentary on and eventually put it up on the network. Maybe they did that and I'm not aware of it, but from what I understand, they just said the budget was too high and stuff like that. Uh, bear with me as my lip is killing me from the other day when I killed myself, essentially. I also, unfortunately, have to mention this. <laughs> it's crazy that I have to mention this. But there are trolls in the world on YouTube. It's going to happen. It's been happening to me forever, and it will continue to happen. But I don't go around blaming other people for it, especially other content creators that didn't really have anything to do with it. Listen, this happens on my Patreon all the time. On my private Patreon video the other day, we had like 30-something, 40 dislikes, and, and and there's still 13 there now. Um, you know, on, on this other, well, this is a different video, but on 13 on that thing now. And it's like, that stuff happens, man. People mess around, shit shit happens, whatever, you know what I mean, it happens to me, you know, 246, all my other corrupted episodes had zero dislikes to maybe one dislike, if you go, if I go back and look at them all, but, uh, you know, this one obviously getting 13 or whatever, and before, and the one, the other one that got, you know, 50 or whatever it was, obviously somebody did something crazy or weird, and that's why that happened. But did you see me, me make a video about it and blaming people and freaking out? No, this was last week's episode, and I didn't say anything about it until now. But I'm only saying it now because it's sort of become relevant all of a sudden. The fact of the matter is, there's trolls out there, but I, I'm not going to go out there blaming everybody for it. So th this stuff happens to me way worse than anybody else, like <laughs> than most people. Other people even that have... 50,000 50, subs, 100,000 subs, and even more. Like, it just happens. You have to put your big britches on. You know what I mean? People say they're doing stuff. It just happens all over the place. It's 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 a fact of life. People are going to rape my kids every other day. Someone's going to rape my kid or someone's going to kill me or something. Uh, but I don't talk about it every day or, or at all because who cares? You know? So... The fact that other people are crying that somehow that's my fault because the internet has trolls is my fault is crazy. And if anything, the damage that they do by sort of being almost kind of slanderous um, in insinuating that somehow I have something to do with this when it happens to me like is, is crazy. This stuff always just happens to me. Who cares? Like it doesn't matter. Who cares about a dislike? By the way, dislikes help L likes and dislikes are the same thing you know oh people have penetrated the patreon people have penetrated this and that they've they've done it to me too it's happened to me all, all the time i just don't victimize myself and cry about it but i'm starting to think i should start to make videos when things happen because otherwise people don't believe you they just think like oh this other poor person you know what i mean and, and but it's like yeah well that's just because i don't make a video about it every time it happens or I don't tweet about it every time it happens I mean let's let's try to let's let's try to wake up here people it's it's just it's retarded um Marty Janetti return to the barbershop <laughs> what, what is this why at Wrestlecade Wrestlecade had this like mock set of the barbershop I guess and Brutus was there was Hulk Hogan there Brutus yeah, there's uh, there's Brutus with his uh, scissors. Speaking of uh, speaking of um, slander, man, Beefcake and Hogan all, in all kinds of trouble. There's Beefcake. There's Marty. <laughs> I guess that's the real set. Wow, at Wrestlecade. Wow. Obviously, there's no glass window anymore. That's pretty cool though. Look at Marty Janetti. Marty's Marty's like, hey. Does anybody in here have any cocaine? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I love them. I love Marty Janetti, man. It's too bad that things didn't work out for him. But there, there's the, uh, yeah, that's the damn set, I guess. There's the barbershop right there. 
right below there. Look at that. We talked about this for a while, that Starcade wasn't going to be televised, wasn't going to be on the network. It wasn't really going to be anywhere. And I just don't understand why they couldn't record something. It, it, it just, I get the ex, to have an exclusive Starcade event to try to promote it specially, to sell more tickets. But that, but all you do, all you're doing is making people want to see it. And I know WWE.com is reported with a few of the, you know, on-site camera single f shot cam camera shots from the event. But I feel like this is something that you could have easily, easily added to the WWE network. Why in the world could you not have three people? I would have filmed it for free if WWE had called Joe Cronin and said, "Hey, we've got the camera." You film it for free, and that's it. I would even I would have filmed the whole thing. I would edit it for like minimal amount of money. WWE could have paid me five hundred bucks. I would have grabbed another guy. I would have had a hard cam. I would have filmed myself. I could have had three camera shots. We could have edited the whole thing together. Hell, I could have done the commentary with somebody else, or or you could have hi you had your own guys do the in house commentary. Whatever you want, you could probably pay Tony Schiavone and peanuts. Whatever you want to do, and and you could have you could have broadcast this on your WWE network for the cost of a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. You couldn't take five hundred dollars. You couldn't even try to get people to do it for free and put it up on the network for your subscribers that pay nine ninety nine a month. We couldn't get Starcade on the network for nine ninety nine a month. Now, I remember at the time that we talked about this a while, because I've talked about this multiple times. This isn't new news. This is going to happen. But I remember thinking, there's got to be a catch here. There's got to be a filming of it. There's got to be, it's going to be on the WWE.com, or it's going to be on the YouTube channel, or they will put it on the network. But I'm seeing no indication of that whatsoever, and I have no idea why that is. And I get why it didn't stream on the network. I can understand that. If you're WWE, maybe treat it like the only way to see this is to be there live. You know what I mean? I would just tell people, hey, it's not going to be streamed on the network. It's not going to be streamed anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to go to the event. And then you could have released the video of it later on. You could have then released the video later because you're not lying. You said it wasn't going to be streamed on the network, but you didn't say that you weren't going to release Starcade on the network at some point and they could have done it they could have said you know next week on the WWE network relive what was Starcade the return of Starcade if you weren't there this documentation of the event plus the matches and da 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 or, or even just just r see the matches you know what I mean and, and 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 here's an opportunity too on the WWE network for you to take advantage of those multi-cam features that maybe you could implement on there where you could have three camera shots from Starcade, and the people at home can just choose the camera shots at will, and you could have commentary, or you could have no commentary even, and people could change the camera shots at home while watching a non-commentated event, like almost like they were there themselves, from a ringside camera, a hard cam in the middle, and, and maybe an action cam or something like that. I don't know. There's so many possibilities you could have done with this for almost no money, cheaply, but why in the world was it not done? There is no answer to that coming out. I, I don't see the answer. I understand the idea of making it seem like nobody can see this because you have to come to see it so we can sell out the arena and make sure that we make a ton of money on what would have been just a regular sort of house show. But instead, it's Starcade. I get keeping it special in that way, but there's no, nothing saying you couldn't have documented this to release it on the network later. Then you get value from it. Now you got the value from the people that went there. But you also get the value from the people who, when they hear that it's going to be broadcast on the network two weeks later, when they hadn't announced that previously, would say, oh, damn, you know, I'm going to get the network now because I wanted to be there and I couldn't be there. And I don't have the network, but I'm, I want to watch what they did at Starcade. So you're doubling the value. Where is the business sense here? And as a fan, why? Like, why? Why doesn't that happen? It's so simple. This is immediate, obvious, bonus content that you can provide on the WWE Network. But they say that it would have cost too much 
to have streamed this on the network. But again, what's wrong with my solution? Hire a couple of jobber cameramen. Edit the thing. Hey, WWE, I'm Joe Cronin. I'll do it for you. I would have done it for them just to give it to everybody. If WWE said, hey, can you edit all the camera angles together and then do commentary or, or don't even have commentary, I would have done it for free. Why wouldn't why wouldn't they do that? Like, I mean, there's got to be someone out there who would do it for cheap. If I'm telling you I would do it for free, there's got to be someone that would do it for cheap. I, j I just absolutely am beyond oblivious as to why this, this didn't happen. By the way, a big shout out to uh, Vito, uh, V2 uh, of Doom, Vito, who increased his pledge on Patreon to $102. Russell Myers, who pledged $2 a month. And um, who else we got here? Uh I got Russell. Um, Justin Johnson going two bucks a month. Alex Valadares five dollars a month. And online persona going up to ten dollars a month. Patty McGill going to ten dollars a month. Coop the comedian editing his pledge from two to ten dollars a month. Thank you, Coop. He's a good comedian. Check out Coop the comedian on YouTube, by the way. Ah. Um. We, we had somebody else, too, that I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah. Nick uh, Giantonio is still here. Also, Jim Kays, pledging 5 bucks a month. Steven and uh, just tons of other people. Brian um, Cardenas, 5 bucks a month. Um, thank you, guys. We are over 270 patrons on Patreon, which is the most ever um, that we've ever had over there. We had, we had a corrupted last night and me and Bailey then after corrupted played NHL and like pay freaking PlayStation wouldn't work <laughs> like it wouldn't sync with the damn X split and that was like a pain in the ass so then I don't know when the first time we played a game was like 5 a.m. or something like that and I was white I was just wiped out but we, we won one that's good it was Bailey's first time playing NHL and I, I'd never played NHL on PlayStation or at least I haven't in years so that was cool um the sales, I think, are still going on. The sales were nuts. It was like twenty nine ninety nine for uh, hockey for NHL, but I had a twenty dollar gift card, so I just used that, and then it ended up costing nine bucks, which was awesome. Uh, obviously, holiday times are here, so it's a little crazy out there. But uh, I appreciate you guys. It's you guys are in full force, despite the fact that we had a Black Friday on Friday night. I mean, the support's crazy. Getting this update on Jeff Hardy via the uh, Wrestling Inc. website. Uh, so far, so good. My physician. Uh, physical, rather, my, phys my physician. My physical therapist says it's moving along great, Jeff said. It doesn't feel great. Naturally, it hurts. I can only do so much, but I'm on the right track. So hopefully after another month, I'll be able to lift weights, start building up my chest and my arms. Hopefully by April, I'll be good to go and actually get back in the ring and do what Jeff Hardy loves to do. But the Hardys, let's face it, have been a, just an absolute failure at this point. Uh, no broken gimmick. No outside-the-box gimmick. Just seemingly the same old Hardy Boys as if they'd never left. You know, um, okay, Matt, yeah, you're good, Matt. Go be a veteran and put the guys over. Uh, oh, Jeff, you know, you. Well, we got some plans for Jeff, I think, you know. So all, all the value of Matt Hardy being one of the most over superstars in the wrestling world just last year. Whether you liked it, whether you hated it, whatever you thought of it, everybody was doing delete Everybody was talking about the final deletion. So much so that the WWE mocked it. The WWE mocked it. Everybody in other companies were mentioning it. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody wanted the Hardys. They were booked everywhere. So much so that Top Rope Promotions, the wrestling company I worked for, did the largest draw of all time. Over 650 people showed up to see the Hardy Boys in Fall River, Massachusetts, at the biggest top rope promotion show in their 30-something years. If that doesn't tell you what these guys were doing, I mean, they made waves everywhere they went. They sold out places. They set records. It was crazy what these two guys did. Jeff looks like he's homeless in this video because he's growing a beard, but... 
WWE has not utilized that whatsoever. Granted, it was TNA with the the broken gimmick and the legal stuff, whether WWE really wants to use it or not. But the more, the longer things go, the more to me it really seems like WWE hired them to cock block them, to use them like the Dudleys. Like, okay, well, now the Dudleys are gone. We need another tag team that's going to come in here and sort of be that veteran team um, to make everything legit and to put over some of the younger guys while creating some excitement. That's all it was. That's all it ever was. That's what we were worried about it being and that they weren't going to be utilized for what they had become. And that's what it is. You're the Dudley boys. Come on in. And, and there's nothing wrong with what the Dudley boys did. I actually like it. I liked what the Dudley boys did. I mean, it got a little ridiculous at the end when they just lost to everybody. That was a little bit insulting to me. But, you know, in, in the end, the Dudley boys came in and they did a duty. And they, they put everybody else on the map. They, they put other people over. And they, and they went out the way you're supposed to go out. But the Hardys were on some kind of fire that I hadn't seen in a long time. I took money out of my pocket and bought TNA pay-per-views. Like, that is insane that they were able to make somebody like me purchase a pay-per-view to see what they were going to do. That I would go to Ring of Honor if it was anywhere near me if they were involved with it. And so many other people would do the same thing. And WWE picked that up. And almost basically just sort of pretended it didn't happen. Which is crazy to me. But you know what? That's even their track record with their own guys. With NXT guys coming up. That's a track record with everybody. Bobby Roode is up here as a weird baby face that's not himself. So the fans that don't know Bobby Roode from NXT, they have no idea. The guy appears to be a heel, but yet he's not. He just seems like he's playing this nice guy. It seems like he's holding it all down. And I know when the when he flips and goes heel, it's all going to make sense then. But this guy needs to come in heel. You need to come in heel. Shinsuke Nakamura, he's a mess too. Sticks and stones may break my bones. I don't want anybody coming up from NXT. I spoke with my buddy Steven Larson the other day, and they told me to check out their video. Well, no, they didn't. Somebody else told me to check out their video. Um, you know, I was tweeting Steven Larson, though, about it. Because I was watching their video about uh, people coming up from NXT and all the people that need to come up from NXT. I got depressed listening to it because I don't want anybody to come up from NXT. I don't want anybody to come up. The only people I want to come up from NXT are people that aren't going to be in the main events at NXT and they can't go any further. People like the some of the women that came up the other day, you know, like like Liv Morgan's pretty good, you know, she for the most part. But she is Liv Morgan ever gonna highlight and and main event a NXT takeover? I don't think Liv Morgan is gonna highlight a NXT takeover event. I don't think she's going to right. So so f it, move her up to the main roster. I don't care. That sounds good to me. Utilize her talent up there as some fresh blood. But. A woman that's good down at NXT, that's really good, that's an A, like a straight A. I don't want her coming up. Bianca Belair, everybody talks about Bianca Belair. They talked about Bianca Belair in that video. Let's see Bianca Belair come up. I don't want Bianca Belair to come up. She's going to whip her hair a couple times, and it's going to get really old, it's going to get really bad, and eventually she'll be gone. I don't want any of those women that could main event an NXT pay-per-view uh, takeover to come up to the main roster. I want them to stay in NXT so I can see them at the next takeover. That's what I want. Have you noticed a pattern at how every single time there's new blood in NXT takeover, everybody talks about, wow, NXT is so much better and like this guy's so good. and They start talking about, wow, this guy needs to come up to the main roster. But then they go up there, for the most part, almost everybody gets buried or, or just turns into a shell of themselves. It, it, and it, it, it repeats itself now. What was it, two, three years now? Three years, right? Three years of, wow, a lore of amazing in NXT. Comes to main roster, not so impressive. I mean, do we need to go through the list of people? Kevin Owens is one of the only people that, um, that did well, you know? Finn Balor's a mess. 
even Finn Balor's a mess. You know, Kevin Owens got a really good push, and Kevin Owens is still like doing all right. But I think they see him as a top mid carder now. They don't see him as a top the guy. Um, and maybe a middle middle carder sometimes. It's it seems like the way they treat him. Finn Balor's a mess, getting injured. They gave him the belt right away, but then he got injured. It's the whole thing's a botch. American Alpha comes up with no story, no background, so nobody can connect with them. Nobody knows who they are or what they're doing there. Sasha Banks has been booked like shit. Like she wins, she loses, she wins, she loses, she wins, she loses. She deserves to win but doesn't. Then she doesn't really, and then they give it to her, and it feels like they force gave it to her. When she was in NXT, she was the boss. That's all there was to it. She was the freaking boss. And then at some point, she put over Bailey, and then Bailey became a top NXT women's wrestler. And you could have very well had those women stay in NXT and continue to be battling for years. You could have drawn up a storyline after Bailey won the title where Sasha got in a feud with another woman down there, and they could have tore it up in a good match, and Bailey could have gone on to fight, wrestle somebody else after they had their rematch. And eventually down the line on another big takeover, it could have been Sasha Banks once again challenging Bailey. You could you could just keep going with that. They had momentum. They were built to the top. They they were hitting on all cylinders. Their stock was at like ninety eight, and it was sta and it was just planted there, man. Bailey comes up to the main roster. Bailey looks like she's weak. She's She's got to overcome this fear of being able to use hardcore weapons or something against Alexa. Then she can't do it and loses. Then in an interview, she acts awkward with Corey Graves, like she's starstruck by him and in love with him or something. Then the next day, then she's the number one contender, and then she's winning again, and then she's not winning, and then she's cutting a... Then she gets injured, then she's cutting a sad promo, then the crowd boos her, basically, and then she reacts to that. What is going on? You can't just book Shinsuke Nakamura as King of Strong Style and let it be that. Let it be Strong Style, Smash Mouth, Break Your Jaw. You can't just market that guy as a badass MMA-like psycho. Instead, you got to come up with the artist. He's the artist, guys. Oh, everybody, make way for the artist. <clears throat> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's what you let that guy say. That's what you let Shinsuke Nakamura say. You don't give him something else. You don't have Shinsuke Nakamura go out there and say, This Sunday, I will target your head with strong style, and you will die like or you know or something like that why i will target your head with the strong style and you will never be the same or you know when i hit you with this when when i when i hit you with the full force of the kinshasa you will feel strong a style like anything like that is better than Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That is just, I gotta believe unanimous amongst everybody watching this video right now. I have to believe that all of you agree that anything is better than what I, than saying a nursery rhyme. And, and, and Velveteen Dream? I don't want to see any of these guys come up to the main roster. My answer is nobody, unless they're a C-plus or D-plus or F player. I don't want to see them come up to the main roster. Anybody that's an A in NXT, I want them to stay in NXT. Because I want to see and be entertained by somebody at their full maximum potential. And it'd be one thing if when they came to the main roster, you know, they, they were, you know, they were, you know, the volume maybe they came down a little bit, you know. Why? Why would the volume come down a little bit when you're killing it in NXT? The volume should be raised as you go to the main roster. But instead, it's subdued. You're blowing the roof off things down in, in NXT. And then when you get down, when you get to the WWE, they push you down. Now, granted, some characters don't work. 
Some characters, they just don't work as well. Some things don't work as well. I think Adam Rose might have been an example a little bit of, hey, we're doing the same thing we did in NXT and it's not working. I think he was mismanaged too and misbooked as well. He was booked as a complete joke and a lot of those people didn't get it. They're not connecting with the mainstream crowd because the mainstream crowd isn't being told the story. Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream told a sort of simple but amazing story at NXT TakeOver. It was unbelievable. The WWE main roster can't even execute something like that. I mean, Aleister Black and Velveteen Dream not only went out there with a somewhat simple classic storyline, but they managed to make it somewhat complex a little bit. And on top of that, they executed the thing flawlessly. But on the WWE main roster, you just wouldn't get that. How in the world is NXT executing something so well? And, and the main roster would never, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be executed right. And and you and the fan base, too, is also dead. I blame, I blame some of the fans, too. I do. I blame some of the, many of the, I don't blame, I don't really blame the casual fans, I, I would say. Oh, man, one of the Patriots is down. Damn it. Well, who the hell's hurt? Um, I don't blame the fans as much directly. I blame WWE for creating these fans. You have created people that just want to go there and be happy. Like, you just want to go there. I saw this on TV. Me and my dad are going to go to the wrestling show. All the stuff that happens, they don't really care that much about. They just kind of know the good guys and kind of know, like, the songs. And they want to see the entrance and then go home. They're not obsessed with wrestling. Or they don't, like, have a above normal craving or passion about it. They just, they're just there casually. WWE is creating way more casual fans on the main roster and less casual fans. Obviously, there's no casual fans in NXT. You're creating a environment for this. And I, I, I get that, you know, you have these two different audiences, but it's, it's, it's the, the audience is shrinking everywhere. It is shrinking. It's not good. You need to blow the ceiling off this thing. You need to be trying to put on the best shows every single week, every single night, and it doesn't feel like they are. It feels like 95 or 96 wrestling. Like It doesn't... This is one of the... I can tell you, this is one of the... And, and some of the most talented people are there, it feels like. We're saying that all the time. But I don't know, some people, some of these people know sell. Some of these guys no sell. I watch Bret Hart throwing punches with Stone Cold. It looks like these guys are punching the crap out of each other, and they're not. And I watch some of the guys now, and it's like, but then I see all these people getting hurt too that you never see before. This has got to be. It's weird. It's like one of the best times for wrestling in, in many ways, like the WWE Network, the accessibility, HD. They can tour all over the place. The production usually looks pretty good, although there's no more pyro because they're losing money. And yet this has got to be one of the worst times in wrestling history. If you're a WWE fan. It's one of the worst times in WWE ever I can ever remember. I can't remember a worse one other than thinking of those mid-90s. And at, the, and at those times, you know, I really liked Bret Hart and I liked, you know, Shawn Michaels and stuff. But a lot of the other stuff, it was just go out there and do the do the thing and whatever, you know. Um, but then there's some great moments that do happen here. You know, when you get like AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, you know, I, I thought that match was fun, even though it was, you know, it's again, you know, Lesnar's never on TV and all this other stuff. But I still thought that match was fun. It ended up being fun, even though I thought, uh, you know, this is crazy. But thank God it's not gender. And, I don't know, I'm just complaining and complaining and complaining right now. But we'll see what happens on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. I don't know. I got more stuff to come today, guys. Thanks for the support on Patreon. Thanks for the support on YouTube. Hit that sub button down below if you're, if you're new. Uh, click the like button. Stick the thumb up my uh, area. You know, if you know what I mean, in the private area, if you want. And, um, and once again, I'm real as F. 
Except for when I don't swear because my kids are walking by. <laughs> um, and the bottom line is, man, people are crybabies, okay? And and every single time something happens to me, I'm not crying about it. But if I got to start playing victim like other people so that people can see what I deal with, do I need to start playing victim? Because I'll play victim if I have to. So we can keep it up and I'll play victim all you want. But I'd rather not talk about it just like I really haven't talked about it for the last whatever weeks and whenever stuff happens. But if I got to bring it up every time, just like everybody else, to try to keep even, to keep people informed, is that what you want? I mean, I don't know. What a weird-ass group of people. I'll see you guys.